Mm. Did I think this is where I'm gonna be when I was 30? How have your relationship with your parents changed? Oh and yeah, I don't think I'm at peace. <laughs> How has living in London changed your perspective on life? Okay, best Chinese restaurant in London. Are you happy with your life thus far? Sour sauce, sauce. And I'm using this. Yeah. Oh, this one's not that satisfying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my god, it's else. Okay, pretend I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> um, um, a little bit of a different video today. So, I think we chatted about a long time ago. There was like this thing going on about British Chinese food and like this American, I don't know, TikToker who didn't understand it. So, I never tried British Chinese food. Apparently, it's quite different. So, we got a spread of British Chinese food here to try. And then while we're eating, we're gonna answer 30 questions about turning 30 because we're both turning 30 this year. I'm already 30, Monica's turning 30, yeah. yay! I think I will publish this video on my birthday. Happy so. birthday, future Happy birthday to Monica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just finished the video, but I realized I didn't really introduce Selena properly at the beginning <laughs> of why we're doing this together. But yeah, I met Selena a year ago? Yeah, so basically yeah. I watched Monica's videos before I moved to London and then I slid in her DMs. I was like, hey, you cute. <laughs> let's, have a date. let's get no. drinks. <laughs> um, yeah, we met at brunch and we yeah. really hit it off. I think yeah. we had similar like backgrounds and backgrounds. Yeah, but <laughs> watching your videos, I yeah. was like, ooh, unless she's massively not the same from her videos, yeah, I was yeah. like, I feel like we could be good friends. And then now, um, We've been kind of working together. He, she's been helping me out, kind of like figuring out the next steps. And I guess you should tell them yeah. a bit about what you do. So I used to have my own sustainable fashion consulting agency and I did it for over six years, loved it and still love it. But I just felt like I wanted to do something different. And so I went through this entire existential crisis, turned 30 <laughs> and decided to pivot and change my entire business. And I talk about it in my first YouTube video that I posted on my new channel, but check it out. yeah, I've been working now with Monica because I realized I want to help more female founders build sustainable businesses that are like good for the planet, good for their lifestyle and also for their bank account so been working with Monica on some things so so we decided to like do a little fun collab and we've been talking about this for a really long yeah time. we've been yeah. talking about this for a while so finally yeah. made it work yeah um cut back to the beginning of the video okay so all this is recommended by my co-workers okay. who are British yeah um so we got beef chow mein not chow mein chow mein okay okay chow and mein. then crispy beef which kind of looks like orange chicken but yeah. sure um, we got just egg fried rice because that seems to be what people go for. They don't want any veggies in it. This is like a veggie meal. There's like meal. one strip of egg. Yeah. <laughs> it's all rice. It, it's part of the appeal, I think. Okay, and then okay. we got chicken balls, which I know you're supposed to dip with one of these lovely sauces. So we got curry sauce and sweet and sour sauce. And then we also got salt and pepper chips. Yes. I had the option of squid or chicken, but apparently chips is the way the yeah. people go. And yeah. not like potato chips, but potato wedges, basically. Yeah. <laughs> not they're, even they're fries. Humongous. Not even fries. It's like potato like, wedges. Yeah. I took it out of the bag because they were getting soggy, but yeah. yeah. What should we start with? Or should we do the chicken Oh yeah, balls, let's maybe? Okay, let's do a chicken ball. Okay. Oh, thank I mean, you. it's not really a ball. More yeah, this length. is like a... Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm, interesting. It needs a sauce. Mm hmm This is better than McDonald's chicken nuggets there. Oh yeah. Have McDonald's I told have I done this? Are weird. Yeah, they're weird. I think it's because it's made out of actual chicken and not the American stuff where it's I think I'm gonna dip it in some curry sauce. Okay. Mmm. Mm. It's okay. not bad actually. Mm. Where we're just starving. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, maybe I'll just start on the questions because we mm -hmm. do have a lot of questions to get through. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about turning 30? As the person with more experience. As the wise one. So I turned 30 at the beginning of July and leading up to July, just starting this year, I feel like I had a full existential crisis, <laughs> which I told you about. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, oh my God, we're turning 30. I feel mm -hmm. like my life is over. Or like, changing. I feel like I should. Yeah, everything's changing. And then it was weird because the week before my birthday, I just felt the sense of calm and I was like, 
this is fine. I'm I'm good. <laughs> and then I just turned 30 and it was not a big deal. And then nothing had changed. Nothing happened. I didn't yeah. wake up and I was like an old Different grandma. Person. Yeah. So it was fine. I genuinely am really excited for this decade, but it was just maybe like mindset or just realizing that mm. your life isn't over, but I genuinely am excited now. I think the same thing for me. I felt it more this year of like, oh, mm-hmm. like it really hits you of like, oh, did I, th- did I think this is where I'm going to be when I was 30? And then if not, then it makes you really reflect on like, okay, shit. Like, yeah. it does feel like, because everyone prioritizes the 20s so much, it feels like your youth went by you and you're like, oh, now what? So, but I think it's a good kick in the butt. Or it's like a point for reflection, right? Yeah. You're turning a new decade, so it's like you reflect on the past decade and then what's next, mm-hmm. which is kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, should we eat another thing? And sure. Then another question. Should we try the chips? Yeah, let's try the chips. I think they're supposed to be kind of like the salt and pepper squid type thing. Oh, I see. Oh my god, it's like so soggy. It's soggy. It's I think okay. I'm gonna dip it in the curry sauce because I kind of like the curry sauce. Mmm. You know when you leave potato chips too long and they go back to Because needs to go in the air fryer. Yeah. yeah. The onions are good. Mm. The flavor is the good. The seasoning's good. Actually, I'm loving the curry sauce. Yeah, the curry sauce is really good. Yeah. Okay, next question. When you were 20, what, is your, what did you imagine your life would look like now? 20-year-old Selena, what did, what did you imagine? Um, I feel like I... Would have thought I was still in a corporate job, probably. I would have mm. thought that maybe I was married. Mm. Maybe, like, have a place. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe, you know, just all these society things. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I ever would have thought I would live abroad, mm. which is very cool. And I don't I think I would have ever thought I would become an entrepreneur. Oh, really? It's very different. Mm. Yeah. Very different. You yeah. know. I think I thought, like, I thought I would actually be living in Asia. I don't know why when I was young, I, I wanted to go work in China. Uh, Which is why I did my internship in Shanghai uh, when I was in university. I think I did think I would be married or have a child by now, which is now I'm like... Which is wild, because now you're like... (laughs) Yeah. And I think I financially thought I'd be in a more stable place. Or like, Mm. oh, like, yeah, by by 30, you'll definitely have enough. I was like, I'll have a million dollars, no problem. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, taxes are a thing. (laughs) Okay, let's eat another thing. Okay. (laughs) Should we try the... Chow men. Chow mang. Yeah. Mang? Oh, Mang. Oh, gee. Mang. Okay. I don't know. Mm. So I'm Mando and we don't eat that much fried noodles. So I never order it. So I'm like, mm, yeah, this tastes. This tastes probably the most authentic out of everything so far, obviously. Like the yeah. noodle. Yes, the noodle. Hmm. I actually quite like this. And it's like, the reason I never ordered chow mein is like, it's usually quite oily. Mm, this, this is not This is actually not oily, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is not bad, actually. I'm impressed. I can't tell if this is actually okay or if we're just starving. <laughs> um, okay, my next question was, what aspects of your dream life are within reach today or that you've already achieved? Like things that Ooh. you imagined you have. That's such a deep question. <laughs> well, I think the first thing is living abroad. This has been something... I started Mm. thinking about when I was 25 and then that was around when COVID happened and I know you moved during COVID which I respect so much (laughs) but COVID happened and so we were like oh we don't know if we want to move so that's one thing. I think the second thing is my relationship with Richard like Mm. I didn't think I would meet someone that I care about obviously so much and it's also such a fulfilling and healthy relationship. Um for me what was the question again? Yeah, I kind of forgot what the question was, and I turned it into <laughs> what I'm grateful for. <laughs> uh, what aspects of your dream life are within reach today? Oh, uh, okay. Of the things I imagined, it'd be like, okay, maybe like living in a place like this by myself, living in places by myself. Um, I think also, yes, my partner too. And also, yeah, just the freedom to be able to do this and like travel whenever I want. I think it's a lot of like realizing things I didn't even know I wanted. Yeah, because when I was writing that question, I was actually thinking about, oh, like the things I wanted in my 20s that I have now. Whereas like, oh, actually I don't really even want those things anymore. Some of those yeah. things. Okay, let's try this chili beef. It's, it's, it's Wait, well, you're doing the beef looking. first? Okay. Yeah, I'm curious. Hmm. Hmm. It's like sweet and sour pork. Yeah, but why is but it crisp, so hard like, to chew? Yeah. I would have assumed these two sauces are the same, but they're mm, not. They're not. But I think they use some of this sauce and add like sweet sauce or something. Yeah. Hmm. It's not bad, but I think I prefer sweet and sour pork. Mm-hmm. Me too. The rice is not bad. I like the rice actually. It tastes mm. authentic-ish. There's no egg, it's just rice. Mm. 
It's basically soy sauce, garlic, egg, rice. Okay, <laughs> free reign on eating. No, you can okay. eat as I talk. <laughs> what is one thing you do regularly that your younger self would be proud of? I think I regularly check in with myself now and reflect, which is something I didn't do when I was younger. I think when I was younger, life happened mm. to me. Like, I would just do whatever my parents wanted me to do mm. or, like, whatever my friends were doing or whatever, and I didn't question anything. But now I actually question what I want, and then I yeah. do what I want, which I think sounds like such a no-shit kind of concept. <laughs> like, do what you want in life. Like, wild idea. Mm. But... Uh, yeah, just like, no, I, think, I think 20-year-old yeah. me would have been aghast. Like, because it's like yeah. the people-pleasing, right? Yeah. So, I think, Same. yeah. I think for me, probably work ethic? <laughs> I don't know. Like, right now, I feel like I'm working pretty hard. Like, full-time job, and then working on YouTube and everything after work, or like, yeah. was doing my freelancing before and everything. Um, I think, actually, when I was in university, I wasn't like that at all. Mm. I was very much like, just like, do the bare minimum in school. Yeah, it goes through the motions, but I wouldn't like do a lot of like things outside. Actually, no, that's that's a lie. Took, you like, give you you give me energy. That's like <laughs> I've been an overachiever all my life. <laughs> no, that's no. the energy you give I, me. I was not definitely not in school. I wasn't. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. that was wasn't. And I don't think I would have been here in my work career because I never imagined mm -hmm. working for somebody else when I was younger. So even the fact that I'm here in my work career, I'm like, well, can't believe you're here for some reason. What is one thing that you wish you did more of? Anything that comes to mind for you? I think for me, um, I wish I work out more. Okay. Yeah, like literally I know I should, I know, but it's like definitely not the top of my priority and I wish I could do it more or I feel more motivated to do it. But you have a yeah. lot going on. I think what I've realized through my 20s is because I had a period very similarly to you where I had a job and I was side hustling my business and trying to do content and it was so much so that you only have so much time, right? Yeah. Your pri the priorities. And I do think you can have it all, just not all at the same time. What do you um, wish you could do more of? I wish I could relax and have fun more. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> not even, because yeah. I feel like every single hobby, I have the mindset now where I'm like, how do I get how good at I this? Or how do I monetize, monetize this? It, yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I just want to be bad at something for the joy of it. But I also feel like I, in my head, I'm like, I don't have time to be bad at something. Mm -hmm. Like I should be doing content or I should be yeah. whatever. Like, I feel like we have to like schedule time yeah. to play. Cause there's yeah. sometimes where I would like spontaneously like go out or something and then I feel bad. Yeah, like, you feel guilty. I, I, I was yeah. meant to do this other thing right this time. Yeah. <laughs> I would say though, sometimes I look at some friends I made and I'm like, oh, that looks nice. You just like after work go for go to the pub. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, must chill. be nice. Yeah, must, must be, be nice. nice. Can't but then be when me. I'm there, I'm like, mm, I'd rather be home editing right now. I know. It's like it's like this internal struggle of like, what do I really want? Yeah. Right. Like, or maybe it's like I personally, I think pub culture is so cool, but it's just not for me because I don't like beer. But yeah, yeah. it's like finding something that you actually find fun, and you're. I mean, like for you, pottery, you find that's it true. Fun, and you actually I did not feel guilty doing yeah. pottery. I was like, oh yeah. So maybe it just I wasn't finding the right things to do. But maybe we should schedule more time to, to play. Go, yeah, do something for yeah. ourselves. Agree. What are some of the biggest milestones from your twenties? Uh, well, moving to London. Yeah, same. Uh, starting my business, getting engaged. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> Oh, Richard. Richard. Oh, I forgot him. I think something well, when I was reflecting, the person I've become is something that I would like to celebrate as a milestone, but I think society doesn't celebrate that because that's not something that's easily quantifiable. Mm. Like, you can't look at someone and be like, oh, I can tell you've gone to therapy. Or, like, you can't look at someone and be like, oh, I can tell you've gone through some shit. That would be shit. an insult. I was like, oh, I, I, know, I can tell I you've gone to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so imagine? different now. It's like a backhanded yeah, compliment. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, wow, you've been working on yourself. <laughs> I imagine. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think just like ment my mental health and like my brain is something I guess. I'm yes. <laughs> my mindset, my mindset. Mindset, yeah. Mm -hmm. Agree, agree. Yeah. Same, I think. For me, it's like sort of buying a condo, um, being invested in real estate, and then, yeah, moving here. It's definitely a big one. Um, Actually, doing this YouTube channel more re regularly, like I think I always 
used to do it a little half-assed-ish, like once a year, <laughs> post a video, really. Okay, we're gonna go to a round of lighter questions, just break it up, about London. Okay. okay. What is the one thing about London that you wish you'd known before you moved? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think. Because, like, obviously it's, like, how yeah. expensive it, it is, but I feel like you know that, so then I don't know. I yeah. Think. The one thing I actually realized I didn't know before I moved here was the whole salary thing. I thought salary would be Ooh, higher here. Yeah. I honestly That's thought funny. I was going to be getting New York salary after the conversion. You know what I mean? Like, at least a bit higher. Yeah. It's literally the same or lower. <laughs> I feel like a lot of, like, oh, new grads are going to me out of like for advice about how to land new jobs in like London and I'm like literally the entry salary in London is lower than probably from where you're coming from so I would actually advise Monica's you like, to stay there don't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stay there get a few more years of experience then move here and you yeah. might get a better salary because like it's just so I don't know how people survive here and live yeah normally yeah. even in flat shares and whatever like even yeah. now a room is like a thousand it's yeah. in like zone two so yeah it's ridiculous I think yeah. yeah, that's the one main thing for me. I think the salary thing for sure, but I don't work here yet, so mm. it doesn't really affect me. But I, w I don't know. I guess maybe... I think I learned a lot from your videos, not gonna lie. Because <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't I'm have known... You. Yeah, because like, I think I was once watching one of your vlogs and you mm. had mentioned your laptop got stolen or something. Or like mm. your phone got stolen. Oh, I can't yeah, remember, but stolen. something got stolen, and yeah. then because of that, I was like, "Oh, I like it." Just reminded me of pickpocketing, so then I was like very mm. aware. And then you did a lot of like how much I spend in a week videos, mm. so then that also kind of showed what prices were. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Mm. Watched your content, Hi. and I was like, "I'm prepared. <laughs> You're prepared. I'm gonna you. move." Yeah. I guess maybe <laughs> one thing maybe is like the areas and. Mm. Like which area is like safe or yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Your favorite thing about London. Only one thing. The people. <laughs> the people. The expats, the expats. The expat. You know what I agree. Mm -hmm. I've definitely met way more well, I, I don't wanna say like I've met way more interesting people, like there isn't interesting people in Toronto, but like definitely more people with similar mindsets. Um, because yeah, yeah, we're all expats here, so you, you find other things to be have in common. And then like people in Toronto, people weren't really looking to expand their fan, friend group. Everyone mm -hmm. already had a set group. Vancouver's the same, very yeah. clicky. Unless you were an expat and you, you were part of that community, then that's something different, right? But I think in Toronto, it's very rare for someone to like invite someone, or like it'd be a conversation to be had if you were like gonna invite someone new to the group that you're mm. in. It's like, oh, can I bring so-and-so? But yeah, yeah, here everyone's like quite welcoming and a lot of just like interesting people from yeah. the rest of the world. Yeah. I think it's just like the different parts of the world thing, like people from all over Europe, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then I have a really good friend now from Bang like we have Bangladeshi friends, we have a lot of Australian friends. Because not a lot of people move from those cultures as much to Canada, or at least back when I was there. I mean now maybe a little bit more, but Vancouver especially, it's like mm -hmm. very like Chinese <laughs> and then there's like Bangladeshi community kind of yeah. and then yeah but they all tend to even they yeah they're very segregated yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you don't get to meet Hang them out. and then yeah. at the time I wasn't seeking that either mm -hmm. but here I'm forced to make seek friends out new yeah friends and like yeah otherwise you're lonely nice. exactly mm -hmm. it does get lonely okay, next question worst thing about London mm. Prices. Yeah, the cost of living. <laughs> cost of living. Yeah. Okay, best Chinese restaurant in London. Mm, dim, dim, dim sum, sum dark. dark. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say too. <laughs> Pearl Liang is pretty good too. It's near Paddington. Mm. I brought my parents and it was actually quite good. But I, I think you it. do need to know what to order. Like the bigger dishes are better than like their little happies or whatever. Favorite English slang. I'm trying to think. I really like Peng. Yeah. <laughs> I find it funny that they say like someone's Peng. Yeah. Like I would never say that myself. <laughs> but when I when I hear them, I'm like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Do you want to explain what it means? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> People are like, it means what? like like handsome or pretty, right? Mm -hmm. Like like beautiful. Like, but like you could fit. say yeah, you could say a guy is like Peng. <laughs> yeah. I would say I like the use of lad. Mm. Like he's such a lad. He's such a lad. Yeah. The lads. The lads are going out. The lads. Out. Lads, yeah. lads. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, 
What's your favorite thing that English people do? Why did I come up with this question? They get so into football. Mm. The pub culture, like we yeah. went to the pub for the England versus Spain finals. And it was crazy. They were so into it. Yeah. It was it was quite amusing to watch. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, they're very. It's like a it's football. like a whole new beast. Cause usually they're very mindful, very demure, very like. <laughs> <laughs> very Who, what, what English people are you eating? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Very RBF. <laughs> and then football, they're like, yeah, let's yeah. fucking go. <laughs> True. Yeah, along with about the beer drinking. Yeah, the pub culture. The 4 a.m. Heathrow Airport beers, I don't understand. Like, you go at any hour of the day to the airport, it's like a thing, they have to have a pint. So at like 4 a.m., at like, not even Heathrow, like Luton or like Stansted, I'm like, what? Everyone has a pint. It's not like one or two people. It's like the pub is full. It's not even a little half pint. It's the yeah, it's the full pint. And like I've seen TikToks where like there people are like the British people are like, oh yeah, we have to have a pint. Kick and off the holiday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I just can't drink a beer up. One, I don't like beer, but I 4 would puke. Yeah, I would be on my Easy Jet flight <laughs> in row 11 D, and it would be like, <laughs> oh, it would be not good. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm gonna go through these faster. <laughs> okay, favorite travel destination since moving to London? For me, probably Amsterdam. But I think it like mm. a lot of Europe largely depends on I feel like the weather <coughs> when you go there. Mm. So I went to Amsterdam, fall, leaves falling, perfect weather, no rain, sunsets on the canal, like as perfect as this could be in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. Whereas Copenhagen, I really liked too, but then it was raining a lot when mm. I was there. It's funny because Amsterdam, I went on King's Day, mm. which is like their king's oh, birthday, yeah. and it's like Project X meets yeah. the hangover <laughs> in real life. It was wild. We got to Amsterdam, I was like, damn. Wait, did you meant to go on that thing? It just worked out because I think it was bank holiday, oh. and then Richard's friend lives in um, the Netherlands, and then he was like, yeah, you should come. He had a totally different experience from me. There was smoke like everywhere. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I would say Sicily. I really want to go to Sicily. Sicily. I love Italy in general. Um, Paris used to be my favorite because I'm basic, yeah. <laughs> but I really love Italy. Like, it's so beautiful. The food is bomb. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to go to Sicily. But Sicily in particular, very nice. You're next or the place you want to visit the most next? Uh, I am going to Lisbon in March for half marathon. Mm. And then... Is that your next one? I think so. Oh, Unless okay. we do something else in yeah. between then. But so far, the trip was yeah. Lisbon in March. Um, I'm, we really want to go to Turkey and South Africa. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, we. You meant we. Yeah. Like, us, we. Okay, I thought, you meant Richard, like, I thought you meant Richard, we. I, was I, like, I said we. Too. I said we. <laughs> I automatically assume. Um, but yes, South Africa, Turkey, pretty high on my list. I think like, also like before I leave London, Jordan and Egypt, like those kind of mm. places where I don't want to fly from Canada to mm -hmm. go to, whereas mm -hmm. here it's like so easy. So mm -hmm. definitely hit those before I leave. What's your favorite hidden gem in London that tourists often miss? I would say East London in general, because I have East London pride, but mm. like Hackney, Shoreditch, Brick Lane. Yeah. Just checking out something that's not West London or not like Buckingham Palace. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's hard because like I do want, like when my friends come, I do understand like, oh yeah, they, they want to see out. Big Ben, yeah. right? And stuff like that. But like to get like the London life, that people actually experience. I feel mm -hmm. like you see more of that in like Hackney. Um, how has living in London changed your perspective on life? For me, it, I think it actually helped me redefine what it means to be successful. Cause I think in Canada, everyone wants the same thing or at least in Toronto where like, okay, you want the high paying corporate job and then you're gonna buy a house, a detached house of course, because nothing as, is as good as a detached house. You need a full three bedroom, four bedroom house. You need a yard. Yeah, you need a yard, you need a backyard. You need a basement. <laughs> you need a mortgage. <laughs> yeah, it's a success <laughs> if you, yeah, you need a basement, a finished basement. It can't be an unfinished basement. It has to be a finished basement, okay? <laughs> and like, it was like, a, oh, you got a, you were able to get a mortgage? Whoa. <laughs> but coming from someone who has a mortgage, oh my God, put that shit off for as long as you can. <laughs> Adulting is hard. Adulting is hard. And then you're yeah. 
Okay, I'm not gonna go on about the mortgage right now, but you don't need a mortgage, okay? Don't don't get a no. mortgage. But here I find like people are happy, like they're not living to pay off their bills. They're living to go traveling. They're perfectly happy, like living in a small flat. You see whole families like where I used to live yeah. in like Tufnell Park, uh, just living in a small flat, like a small one bedroom, two bedroom flat with a yeah. baby. Like of course I'm sure they want more space, but like they also are valuing their lifestyle in London more and yeah. that they want to live there and like everyone at work that I know they prioritize traveling and like you know spending time with family they don't complain that much actually about like living here because like well it's because we came from Toronto and we know like what it could be was like you know space modern and space, space. <laughs> but they're like yeah no, this is fine yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so now i'm like looking at that i'm like oh yeah you know what like i don't really need that like i don't need that big house i don't mm -hmm. really need to like buy all these things and yeah that's how it changed for me quite quite dramatically i would say yeah yeah i think very similarly just lifestyle wise because in canada and in the states it's always like bigger is better yeah and it's also, I think, really stressful, right? We talked mm. about the mortgage. So it's just like learning that less is more and learning to be content with not materialistic things, but mm. experiences and conversations. And yeah, I think it's just a different lifestyle. Yeah, like quite you said. different. Like, I'm sure those people exist in London as well, right? Oh, like, yeah, of, course, of course, like the yeah. Kensing, you know, people live in Chelsea and wherever. More but, yeah. Um, definitely more so here that people yeah. are just happy with, yeah. happy with less. Yeah. Um, okay, if you could choose again where to move, where would you move? No constraints, right? Like you, like in London? No, no, anywhere in the world. Oh. Dream place to live. If there was no constraints on your visa, work, uh, Richard would move there too. I would still say London. Really? Yeah. Oh. If I had all the money in the world, no constraints, yeah. Yeah, you would choose London. I really like it here. Oh. What about you? <laughs> You're like, like interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wouldn't say London. London wasn't even on my list before. Interesting. The only reason I'm it's here is because of youth Nate. mobility. Oh, Nate. No, Nate is studying in the UK, so it was the easiest place for me, me to uh, move to. Plus youth mobility, right? Yeah. Um, but if I had a choice of like just trying somewhere, probably like Singapore or like. I don't think I could do Asia. Yeah, yeah, I really like Asia, I so I prefer I Asia. The working culture is too much. The heat is too much, the humidity is too much, uh, but the food is very good. Yeah, the food is yeah. very good. Um, okay, now we're back to the serious questions, mm. okay? We're gonna talk about changes. Ooh. Well, it goes like, it goes like super deep. <laughs> it feels weird going so why, deep. Why are you so surprised when you're the one that came out? <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> okay, so, okay. <laughs> How has your sense of self changed? <laughs> Damn, Monica. <laughs> mm, I think I'm just more confident and I'm more mm. self-aware and I know what I want and I know what bothers me. Yeah. Good sense of self. Embodiment of the mind and body. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds spiritual. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think same for me. Definitely more comfortable in my own skin, more comfortable mm -hmm. with what I think I should be doing, I guess. I think before I would have thought thought a lot about what other people would want me to do or what I think other people would want me to do. Yeah, I have a better sense of what I what I want with my life and like at peace with it. Mm -hmm. Not putting myself down. Yeah. Not wanting what other people want, kind of thing. Yeah. This is 30. This is 30, yeah. Um, how has your thoughts on your body changed? Mm, yeah, I think it's just like accepting and realizing my body is a vehicle to be on this earth, which sounds very spiritual, but yeah, it's just like, it doesn't need to look a certain way, it's like to help me to walk somewhere, if I can run somewhere, you know, it's just like, mm. I don't need it to be smaller or whatever, like it can mm. just be and it, it's meant to just house me yeah. on this planet. <laughs> it's getting <I'm> alien. <laughs> Tells me here why I me here. Why I Before I over. return to my home planet. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I'm not quite there yet. I think definitely I am less motivated to do things to change my body dramatically. You know, like if you look back at my channel, I used to do keto and like all these other things. And I definitely was like way more motivated to stick to those diets nowadays. It's not like I love my body, but I'm like accepting of it. And I would do what I can, but it's not my top priority to change my body. How has your health changed? 
Oh my god, I feel like it's rapidly <laughs> declining. I know. Oh my god. It is actually serious once you hit 30. Or like when you get close to these it, old you bones, feel it. These old bones. <laughs> yeah. Drinking cannot recover. Oh, can't do that anymore. Yeah. If I get tipsy, I know the next day is going to be a shit day. Like, I cannot recover anymore. Soreness, any kind of, like, sitting bad (laughs) posture. Oh, my God. Came over. Yeah. (laughs) Need to stretch every night. (laughs) What is something... I'm I'm all over the place with these questions. What is something you find yourself learning over and over? How to take care of myself. Oh. What do you mean? Like, so I don't burn out consistently. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm always learning, always adapting. And piling on more, taking away. It's just yeah. like how to continue to love myself, take care mm. of myself, put myself first. I think something I learn still every, like, so often now is, oh, I should have just done what I wanted to do mm-hmm. instead of thinking about what other people might have wanted. Because, like, yeah, I find it's just like, oh, I think I'm doing the right thing, but I'm like, oh, I should have just done what I wanted to do. Yeah. Of, or, like, sometimes I'll say yes to go to things because I feel bad. Yeah. Or, like, maybe the week of I have so much going on for work and I'm exhausted. Yeah. But I'll still go because I made a commitment. Yeah. But then the whole time I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? Learn how to say no. <laughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, so every so often I'm like, in the, I have to remind myself, just do what you want to do. Don't think too much. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. How have your friendships changed? Kind of going back to the first mm, section. Much more quality, much deeper, mm. and more meaningful. And like... I think we talk a lot about vulnerable things and Mm -hmm. yeah same yeah i think also like for me more distance now because like most of my close friends are in toronto but you know it's we me and it's like we never was apart so Mm -hmm. it's still good but yeah definitely deeper definitely a lot more emotional i feel like people are nowadays even Mm -hmm. my friends who are not they're more like like they weren't the type of people to say stuff like that or like say Mm -hmm. like you know, everyone seems to be getting more sentimental as age, or like realizing the value of like people in their lives, or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel like everyone's a little more sentimental now. You're acting like we're <laughs> sixty, or not even like we're eighty-year-old grandmas. How can I? Do? Um, how has your thoughts on your romantic partner changed, or the idea of, you know, mm. a, par- your, a partner? I guess one thing is what a healthy relationship is because I think before there was a few things I thought your partner was your everything Mm -hmm. and then the other thing is I thought like you would never argue and that's the pinnacle of a healthy relationship but through therapy and through experience Mm -hmm. I have learned that your partner absolutely should not be your everything they should definitely be your best friend and your partner and your lover or whatever but you can't go to them for everything um and and that's okay like you should have friends you should have mentors and then you can talk to them but you should not go to your partner for everything because that's that's not healthy and that's not a realistic expectation to put on your partner and it's not fair Mm -hmm. yeah i think for me similarly in terms of like expectations with relationships i think i had definitely had a very idyllic view of what it meant to be loved by someone else Mm -hmm. like what they should be doing and and like what you should be expecting Mm -hmm. i think partially from like the influence of like watching dramas <laughs> like, yeah Korean dramas. <laughs> and also like i think when i was younger i thought it was enough to be loved like if somebody else mm. i was in a lot of relationship where it was like oh they like me okay sure maybe it'll work out because they like me <laughs> right <laughs> and then and then it doesn't work out and then i realized i don't like them so that it doesn't work out how have your relationship with your parents changed oh <laughs> I feel like I now have compassion and empathy and I can understand where they're coming from a lot. Like I'm able to put myself in their shoes Mm -hmm. a lot more and I think that comes with maturity and with just life experience. So like if they get upset or they say something that's really weird or they do whatever, I'm able now to take a step back and be like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. It doesn't it's still like I still might get upset or whatever yeah. but at least I know where they're coming from and I think that has helped our relationship because mm-hmm. I can just calm down and not like you know be snarky back or yeah, whatever yeah. not be a brat basically yeah I think similarly I used to get really frustrated <laughs> yeah because they they wouldn't be willing to change or in some way or like be understanding of like a new way of thought like they're very there's like typical Chinese stereotypes of what 
like a person should be or like what what success means Mm -hmm. and they'd be very unwilling to move outside of that Mm -hmm. now I'm like at the stage of this acceptance where I'm I'm kind of like okay I don't need to change what they think I just need to be comfortable with what I decide and like know what I'm getting myself into if I choose to tell them or whatever Um, and yeah I'm a a bit more also understanding now of like knowing their struggles and like as an adult knowing what that meant for them and like the risks that they took when they were younger to even like move to Canada so being like more appreciative of that and like understanding so it's it's definitely in a better place I think I definitely mm-hmm. used to be more resentful mm-hmm. when I was younger yeah and now it's like okay you know what everyone's like learning as they're everyone's like, trying their best yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and it all comes from a good place last two questions um, well yeah kind of <laughs> there's like 10 more well, um, okay How has your thoughts and relationship with money changed? Well, I feel like money mindset is something you continuously work on, but I do recognize now that obviously money is not the end all be all, but money is still important to survive and like money is a tool. Um, I think I'm just recognizing more that money is a tool and I'm learning, especially with like the venture capital stuff, like learning how to like learning about the system and then also like how to make the system work for the kind of economy or like future I want to see so and just reminding myself to think more abundantly which I know sounds a bit woo woo but you know just like collaboration over competition like all these different things and how you act I think is so important especially as an entrepreneur and just as a person in general um and I also realized that as like a children of first generation immigrants there's a lot of like penny pinching and like budgeting and that kind of mindset and I think while that's important you can't like not spend a five dollars on coffee and then all of a sudden afford a two million dollar house in Vancouver you know it's it's just (laughs) the math's not mathing so you also need to figure out how to make more and it's Mm. not just about not spending money on coffee it's also about how do you make more so yeah yeah I think definitely for me like my parents have passed down a lot of stuff about money so Mm -hmm. like very like scarce scarcity mindset about it but I think that they also passed down what you should buy with your money so Mm. like what is worth it to buy with your money in terms of like oh yeah you should buy a house or like actually my dad really wants me to buy a designer bag I have never bought a designer bag and he thinks that a girl should have a designer bag and I was just like, of all the things you wanted me to spend my money on, you want me to spend four thousand dollars on a purse? Say less. Uh, Say less. Yeah, exactly. But that's this is how I think my mind has shifted now too, because yeah, of course my parents when I was young or when I was younger, I was like, yeah, I want to make lots of money, you know, buy all these designer things, buy a house, da da da. da. But now I'm like, okay, actually, you know what? I don't really want that kind of stuff, and like. I feel the impulse to return it actually. Mm-hmm. I have I have returned and sold. Like I actually ended up selling my old Palen bag that I bought actually oh. and I'm actually debating selling this one cuz I realized it just doesn't like I would rather have something else actually. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like this has changed a lot of my mindset with money and like yeah, like the nice having a nice place that's where I actually realized I would splurge on like it really matters to me a lot where I live yeah. rather than like things yeah uh, things and then also like traveling that's where I would like like to spend more of my money and stuff like that so I think a lot of like the mindsets passed by my parents is all about like outer appearance right yeah. that's why she, they want me to buy the designer social, bag social social image yeah. is big for I think immigrant parents yeah exactly and like they they don't really tell to teach you how to be like happy with yourself almost Mm -hmm. so a lot of my money mindset used to be surrounding like outer appearance Mm -hmm. and now now external validation yeah exactly now i think also after 10 years of earning money and spending my own money i know where like after i spend the money i don't feel good yeah there's times i spend money (laughs) or like oh going to the pub (laughs) Uh, i was like going to the pub and spending 60 pounds i feel like shit (laughs) Yeah. I do not want to spend 60 minutes yeah. on the pub. Okay, this is going to be the last question because this video is going on too long. Are you happy with your life thus far? Oh god. <laughs> so deep. <laughs> First of all, let's define happiness. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Honestly though, <laughs> what is happiness? Everyone's chasing I think happiness. I'm content. Like internally, I'm really yeah. content. And I think it's taken me a while to get to a place where I recognize that my internal contentment means more to me than external things and obviously as I'm saying this it makes sense but it is much more difficult to embody it Mm. and not chase like 
you know, all the materialistic things or all those status things. And so, yeah, I am really, really happy. I'm so glad I'm here Mm -hmm. with you and just in in London in general. And yeah, I'm I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of you. Stop it. You're too good with your words. Um, Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Same Z's. Same Z's. I feel like <laughs> this is one thing I learned at work where I realized I have really high expectations or standards. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's not that I regret anything. It's not that I am not grateful for everything I have. But I feel like content feels like so high for me to be content. Like, okay, let's say, define it. So for me, yeah. it just means like at peace. Like I, oh I'm yeah, at I don't think I'm at myself. peace. <laughs> Monica's I out feel like war, every day is a war. She's at war. She's going to battle. <laughs> uh, yeah, not completely at she peace. She wakes up. She's like, here's yeah. my sword. Yeah. yeah, I definitely still feel like every day is like <laughs> a struggle. <laughs> no, not a struggle. Like, obviously, I am not in any dire situation. I am, you know, better off than I feel like the average person, like. obviously. Like, I, like, I don't want to come off as ungrateful. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. think, I think that's just my personality, to be honest. Mm. I realize this at work, too, where, like, very rarely am I, like, super satisfied with a project. Like, my CEO goes, like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I'm like, mm, could have been better. <laughs> Like about your like, own work or other people's work? <laughs> no, it's my own work. My own work. Yeah, yeah. My own work. Well, I do think you have a go. very high standard for things you produce, which I respect. I think I think you have a very perfectionistic yeah. thing. And yeah, so I don't know if that's something you can change. Like, if the question was, am I happy with life thus far? Yes. <laughs> But could be improved. <laughs> well, I mean, always, yeah. always. But hey, you haven't turned thirty yet. Maybe when you hit thirty, you'll you'll be at peace like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Comes with age. It only uh, two more weeks <laughs> before I'm at peace. Every day. Hey, are you at peace yet? Yeah, I'm at peace yet. <laughs> I think also it's like the the recency bias of right mm. now. I think because we've been talking about like there's a lot of change that will be happening in the next year or so, so I don't feel at peace. But maybe if you asked me this like a year ago, I would feel at peace. Because I thought at the time I was moving towards the direction I wanted to go. Mm. Whereas more like now I know I'm not and I'm trying to switch, so it does feel like a war every day. That's fair. You know I, I, mean? I felt yeah. like that when I was going through my pivot too. I think it's because mm. I've come out of my pivot and now I'm like, I know what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, you're, you know the, the road where mm. I'm like That's trying fair. to- you're figuring it out. Turn <laughs> right now. You're trying to- Try, I'm trying to pivot, pivot. <laughs> That is all the questions I had. Yay! We Happy had, birthday! Thank you. We actually had more <laughs> questions, but we're gonna answer them on Selena's channel next. Um, it should be going out on the same day, yeah. so I'll link it in the description or in the comments of where to watch it. But we'll be talking more about the future. Yeah. Yeah, the future. The scary future. While eating some desserts. All right, the camera shut off, so that's our cue to finish this. Been talking too much. <laughs> yeah, um, the food was quite good. Yeah, I would give it like a six and a half out of ten. Really? Or seven, would, seven, seven, seven. Yeah, I would say like a seven point five even. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> I don't know. But the the standard for this, Chinese like, food is brought the, okay. This is the, bad. these two brought the average down. This is bad. This I see the potential. Yeah, I just needed to be heating it up. The chips are just bad. Yeah. I think if I got we got the chicken or the squid. Yeah, the chicken or the squid would yeah. be better. Chow mein, pretty good. Curry yeah. sauce, pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to see us answer more questions and talk about what's next in our thirties, whoa, um, you can check out Selena's channel. Um, I've been working with her on kind of like what I'm gonna be doing next year. So stay tuned. Hint, hint. Something will be changing. We'll see. But Yay! Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was so fun. Yeah. Thanks. Yay. Thanks for being here. Bye. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, bye. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say that. <laughs> um.